All right, uh, final kneel down just happened. That'll do it. Falcons win 27-23. And look, there's some stuff. There's some stuff to hang your hat on in this game. There is. There's some stuff to be happy about. This offense, much better. I mean, this offense, <laughs> they bounced back in a big way. They moved the ball well. Gino threw for 300. They ran for well over 100. So many guys played effectively in this game. I thought DK played good. Lockett played a really good game. Goodwin got involved. Fant, Walker, Penny, Disley, Parkinson. The offensive line for 90% of this game was excellent. So, look, th this offense... You want more than 23 points, I understand. We kicked a few field goals, didn't get it done at the end of the game. But overall, you're looking at this offense and you're going, okay, it's a step in the right direction. Geno Smith is playing competent football right now. It's not great. He misses a couple throws. He makes a couple mistakes. He, he gets sacked once or twice when he doesn't need to be getting sacked. So, yeah, of course it leaves stuff to be desired, but... You got a good game called from, from, from Waldron. You got a great game from the offensive line featuring those two rookie tackles. You can see that they're ready for the big show. I, I mean, if, if you were somebody who was really down on the offense after the last six quarters against the Niners and Broncos, then this had to make you feel a lot better. But this, this defense, man, <laughs> and look... I think we know what Pete Carroll is. I think we know how Pete Carroll thinks about stuff. He cares about his defense deeply. He cares about run defense. He wants to stop the run. It drives him crazy that his team can't stop the run. So he has to be absolutely just disgusted with this. And you know he's pounding on this in practice every single day. Because he wants his teams to be able to stop the run. It's the most important thing to him. And week after week, I mean, it started out better today. It was a little better at the start. Seemed like things improved, but by the end of that game, no. And who on that defense really is playing well, other than I maybe Nwosu? It, it's, uh... I don't know what to say about it anymore other than whatever he's doing is not working. And even though I knew this was going to be a bad season, it's time to hold him accountable for the fact that he can't fix this right now. And I'm going to say what I've been saying for a while now. The Falcons offense is one of the worst offenses that you are going to play this season. Marcus Mariota, a veteran journeyman, glorified backup quarterback, very, very mediocre quarterback, probably one of the worst starting quarterbacks in the league at this point, a team that is missing their theorized number one receiver, a team that is playing a gadget player at starting receiver, mediocre offensive line at best, and you can't stop them. 27 points, and they tried to give you the game at the end there. They were running all over you. They were about to put that game away, and then Mar Mariota just drops it. <clears throat> That's what it took for us to actually get off the field. That's what it took for us to actually make a play to flip this game. Mariota had to give it to us. So offensively, yeah, sure, there's some stuff to be cool with here. There's some stuff to be happy about. There's definitely some stuff to like. But that that's the thing that kind of blows my mind. Pete's the defensive guy. Pete cares about this stuff, especially stuff like stopping the run especially stuff like playing disciplined and nothing. There was a little bit of quarterback pressure today, but not nearly enough. And overall, what did they do well today? Pretentious Cameron, thank you for the $5. This game is on the offense. Defense played bad, but offense scored three points in the second half. This offense can't just play a full game. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not happy with the offense, but I'm not blaming this game on the offense at all. The Falcons' offense is supposed is probably going to end up being one of the lesser offenses in the league, and you could do nothing against them. That that's the thing that I'm really hung up on here. And so many of these players. Here's the real thing: 
so many of these players that get hyped, so many of these players that get pumped up by this coaching staff, by the Seattle media, like Daryl Taylor, Josh Jones. Josh Jones was the star of training camp. Jordan Brooks spent a first-round pick on him. All these things. And you get out there on the field, and it's just like, eh, these guys could be anybody. <laughs> Jordan Brooks? What is Jordan Brooks right now? Uh, Daryl Taylor getting thrown around like a rag doll on every running play? He doesn't even look like an every-down player in the league. He looks like a spot player. So, what what is there... What is there to say other than what is going on with this team's ability to develop players? These players don't even look like they're developing. They're not getting better. And that's really troubling. Because look, this season, whatever. This season's whatever. We all know it. We all know that... This season, it was unlikely to be anything good. We're a bad team. Honestly, after today's loss, I think we have a chance to be a really bad team. Like, four wins, I think, is on the table now. You can't find a way to beat this Falcons team when they're kind of trying to give it to you. Who are you going to beat? But the problem is, I don't see them getting better. And I see a lot of mistakes having been made with the way this defense was built, which... While I would understand it if I thought it was something that was going to get better, I don't know. Puna Ford looks worthless out there. You change to this defense and you keep Puna Ford. That implies you think he's going to fit in. It doesn't look like he fits in at all. It looks like he's a complete waste out there. I understand that losing Jamal Adams is massive here. Losing Jamal Adams affected our run defense massively. We would be much better against the run and in general with Jamal Adams out there. But even without that, it's, it's like so many of these players just don't know the basic fundamentals of the, 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 the basic fundamentals of stuffing the run right now. And I just... It's not like I'm upset about it. It's not like I'm really mad about it and I, I want to throw something through the wall and get somebody fired or anything like that. It, it, it is what it is, but I'm just really surprised that Pete Carroll can't figure at least that part of it out. There are teams out there that are in a state just like us. There are teams out there that are maybe even a, in a worse state than we are that are more competent at that stuff than we are right now. We're giving up 50-yard runs, 40-yard runs like it's free we're giving up, I, we, we get a tackle after a six-yard gain on a run play. And I'm like, wow, we did really good on that play because I'm so used to it being like 15 yards. <laughs> so, I mean, people are going to kill Geno because he didn't get it done at the end of the game. I understand that. People are going to kill the offense for getting Geno sacked on the last two drives of the game. But all these things you can say about the offense, I, I, I just can't even bother getting mad at them. Like, the offense did good. You're not going to score a touchdown every time you get in the red zone when Geno Smith is your quarterback. You're not going to get it done every single play when you've got two rookies starting to tackle. And honestly, they got it done on almost every play. Well, what else do you expect? But it's the defense that looks like one of the worst in the league. And that's where our coaching brain trust is concentrated. Pete Carroll, Sean Desai, Clint Hurt... You tried to beef it up on the defense. You tried to switch things up on defense so it would be new and different and effective, and it's worse than ever. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't know. I, I, I do know that we have started poorly on defense the last couple of years, and maybe it's not a shock that we're starting bad on defense this year again. But that being said, this is a diff this feels like a different level. This Falcons offense, guys, look at the quarterbacks we're going to be playing as we go through this season now. Look at the quarterbacks we have remaining on our schedule. Matt Stafford, twice. Kyler Murray, twice. Herbert, Mahomes, uh, Derek Carr, Brady. These are guys who are significantly better than Mariota significantly better than Mariota and we gave him no issues today we hit him hard once or twice 
we were able to get him on the ground a couple times. There were a couple moments where I was like, okay, we got a little QB pressure. Kobe had the sack on a, on a, a Mariota, which was cool. Woolen had the meaningless interception. Good for him. But how are you going to stop anybody if you can't stop Marcus Mariota? And it's really starting to look like that Denver game, which I know the defense played well in that game. I know they did some positive things in that game. It's starting to look like your guys just got up and 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 jumped out of bed that morning like they were going to fight Mike Tyson and were just all amped up because um, the defense I've seen the last two weeks has not resembled it at all. The only reason why Atlanta didn't drop 34 on us was because they gave us the ball at the end. We didn't do anything to force it. And we still couldn't win the game. And yeah, okay. Talk about Geno. He didn't get it done at the end. Guess what? $3 million quarterbacks don't get it done at the end. Okay? $3 million quarterbacks, if they can play competently, if they can avoid big-time turnovers, if they can avoid just just failing to score any points the whole rest of the game, you did pretty well for yourself. So here we are, 1-2. and two. And it might be a race to the bottom. And some people are cool with that, and I totally get it. We're going to get a good draft pick. We're going to get that future franchise quarterback, da-da-da. It's fine. It's understandable. I'm, uh, it's not something I'm mad about. But you got to say, these players, through three games, there's plenty of time to turn it around, but through three games, they're, they're not seeing a lot of development, especially on that defensive side of the ball. Jordan Brooks looks like just another guy. Quandre Diggs looks washed, honestly. Honestly, like Quandre Diggs looks completely just whatever out there, maybe slightly above average. So it, it's tough right now. It's I'm going to get over it. We had a fun stream today, but the game ended up being kind of a disappointment. But hey, this is where you find out where the real fans are. This is where you... Find out who on your team is worth keeping around. The problem is right now there are way too many players, particularly on defense, that look like they are not worth keeping around. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I'm going to go chill out for a bit. We'll do a post-game stream. Thank you to everybody who showed up to the in-game stream today and uh, hope to see you guys during the post-game. But uh, I don't know. It, it, it's kind of crazy that a coach like Pete Carroll, a future Hall of Famer, can't figure this out to the point where they're at least competent. They're not even remotely competent right now in basic areas like stopping the run, getting pressure. The coverage isn't very good. I know Drake London and Kyle Pitts are tough matchups. I'm not even that mad about that. Um, Michael Jackson, Kobe Bryant, Tariq Woolen, they're going to get beat sometimes in a game like this. They're going to get beat a few times in pretty much any game. But these very basic, basic things the basic parts of playing football just feel like they elude us right now and that's way more troubling to me than whatever this offense is doing which again you pay three million for a quarterback you get a three million dollar quarterback a vast majority of the time uh shout out to Boye Mafe. I guess he's one player on the defense I'll, I'll give a little bit of credit to uh, may, maybe, uh, uh, Woolen got a pick. Woolen got a pick. I'll, I'll give it to him. He did fine. No issues with the way he played. But, you just can't stop the run. Just can't stop the run. And that's the part that shocks me. I knew it was going to be mediocre. I didn't think it was going to be league worst. Alright. I'll see you guys later. Go Hawks. Post game stream later, like I said. And, moving on. Moving on.